This is the Ryder and Lisa Replay. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Check out the Southtown Hyundai Advantage at southtownhyundai.ca. Seven. Thank you for checking out the show. Tomorrow night, the blue moon. Yeah, I want to know if our listeners genuinely do believe that the moon affects us as humans because Isaac Newton had theories about it and proposed that the gravitational pull of the moon in fact does affect the fluid within the human body. I genuinely think I'm weirder when there's a full moon and weirder things happen around me. When I used to work in the bar industry... I worked at Hudson's on Bourbon Street, and I knew when there was a full moon, there was always weird things happening, Mm. strange people coming in and doing strange things. It was always a wild night shift. So you combine that with Halloween, and they're saying that this is going to be the best time like in quite some time where you can actually make a connection with the paranormal because apparently it's like really thin between the worlds on Halloween anyways, Which let is alone awesome. with the moon. There's a lady on TikTok who has a video that's blown up yeah, and she breaks it down for us. We do not manifest on a Taurus full moon, friends, and I'm going to tell you why. Right now, Mercury's in retrograde. A lot of crazy energy flowing around out there. Taurus is also a set sign. We also have the veil thinning for the purpose of we are moving into the new earth. We also know that Halloween is known for being super thin with the other side. Okay, so the only thing that made sense to me there was her last sentence. It's a Taurus moon. We're in a Taurus moon, Ryder. Okay, can you explain the other things that she was talking about? We also know that Halloween is known... How about this, this line? Taurus is also... Um, We also have the veil thinning. It's thin between the... Moon and us. Yeah, yeah, good, thanks. But I- in with the other side. So with that said, we do not want to manifest on this full moon, but what we do want to do is we want to think about the things that we want to change, the things we want to bring, or the things we want to leave behind. Okay, so to break this, this was really confusing to me because I thought manifesting was setting yourself up for something you want or something that you want to get rid of and really thinking about it until it happens. Okay. But she's saying... Be prepared to leave some things behind and be prepared to bring things with you to this next phase of your life. But you want to leave behind all the junk. Correct. And then you manifest after, like on November 1st. November 1st. What you want. That's when you're going to manifest. But for now, we're getting, we're cleansing. We're getting rid of things with the full moon. And then when the new moon comes, that's when we're going to manifest what we really want. Mm-hmm. And that can be things including money. I think that everyone listening should do some research because I do believe that the moon has full power over us. I feel like the next time I really dive into this kind of thing, I need weed. (laughs) And now, here's another terrifying episode of Terror Tales. (laughs) This is uh, my story, actually. I went to uh, boarding school when I was in grade 11. Both of my brothers got to go to like really prestigious schools in yeah. New Mexico. And why did you go to a boarding school? Because I wanted to be cool and go to another school as well, but I couldn't get into the good one, so Aww. I went to Outlook, Saskatchewan. <laughs> That's really yeah. cute. Anyway, I uh, went away, lived there. A couple months in, we decided we were going to play some Ouija board, so we snuck away in one of the guy's cars, and we got it all set up. Like laid the seats back. There were four of us, now, and we started playing. Was this uh, a regular thing that people did in boarding school? They'd hang out in cars because there was nowhere else to go. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, we were. Yeah, that's where we'd smoke. Right. That's where we'd chill out, learn about each other. Anyway, <laughs> we started playing Ouija board, and it was very evident very quickly that okay. it was getting real. Uh-huh. Uh The one guy was fairly well practiced in Ouijaing. And he was even scared when he found out which, like, spirit we were talking to. He's like, this guy's no joke. Okay. And he wasn't even playing. Uh, My legal name is Roy. I don't go by it because I grew up in a small town. My dad's legal name is Roy, and so is my grandpa's. Right. So it would be very confusing having three Roy's in the same small town. So did anyone that you went to boarding school know that that was your legal name? Nobody would have. Okay. Uh, and the Ouija board kept calling me Roy, and I wasn't playing. It said, like, Roy, stop praying once it no. started to get real. Were you real. praying? 
Uh, yeah, yeah. I was trying to like protect us because it was getting so insane. And you went to church growing up, so yeah. you you genuinely were praying in the car yeah. at the time. Okay. The music came on at one point, and the key wasn't in the ignition, so no, that's not a thing. Oh, I don't like that. Uh I had a cigarette at the time, and... Ryder, I put how it, old were you? 16. I put it in the ashtray, and then when I looked like a second later, it had a cherry on it that was like three quarters of the cigarette. It looked like you had hooked a cigarette up to a Dyson vacuum. Someone just sucked And it, it. just like... Mm-hmm was demolished. Uh, there was weird writing on the windows because nope. it was a little bit foggy uh, that we didn't notice before and didn't make sense. Like, it got really scary. Anyway, we end up back at the dorms, and this school has been known to be haunted before. The entire top floor of the girls' dorm is boarded off because there were so many ghost sightings up there. Um... So they weren't surprised at all. We got back to the school and some weird stuff started happening in my room, okay. like things falling off my cupboards and and I couldn't sleep. It was two or three days and I, I was just a mess. So we actually got, um, we went and talked to like the, um, the whatever person yeah. that like makes the decisions, the dorm leader. Okay. And he went up the chain and they actually brought somebody in and did an exorcism on my room and one of the other guys' rooms that was seeing things as well. And then that luckily was the end of it. Have you seen anything paranormal since in your life? No, nothing. And like, and I'm, you truly believe that everything happened that night. It was nothing was fake. The, like the writing on the window could have been someone for sure, but the name, the name They're thing's calling creepy. Me the cigarette thing and the music. Like I vividly remember thinking like this is impossible right now. So you happy, believe in it. Happy Halloween and be safe out there, yeah. little ones. Okay, I have some scary I guess I should get some scary music for this. Oh, okay. I have some scary quotes. From very famous scary movies. Exactly. I'm, I don't watch scary movies, so this is kind of unfair. If you get more right than wrong, okay. you win. And I have to go into the bathroom and do some scary stuff in the mirror in yeah. the dark. Yeah. Which is apparently a really good way to talk to demons. Uh, if you lose, you do, okay? okay we're going to be in so much trouble from the boss if we get demons in the building. Away she goes. Okay. Here we go. Name this movie. I see dead people. Um, I know the movie. I don't know what it's called. Dead. Silence of the Dead. Silence of the Dead. <laughs> the one with uh, Misha Barton is the ghost under the bed. Six, Bruce Willis. Sixth Sense. I think I should get a point for saying Bruce Willis. No, I don't think you get a point for just yelling out Bruce Willis. Sorry. Oh, for one. Next. Here's Johnny. <laughs> the Shining. Correct. Yes. One for two. Next up. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. Frankenstein. Nice work. Two for three. Next. Corn on the cob. Children of the corn. <laughs> no, that would be poltergeist. Ah, oh, shoot. Uh, next. Very short one. Be listening close. Do you want to play a game? Oh, um, uh, the one with the guy with the little tricycle. <laughs> the tricycle guy. Chucky? The si- nope. Oh. The one with the... He wears a tuxedo. Uh... The answer is saw. That's the one. Oh, That's okay. what I said. You don't get the point. For the one with the tuxedo. Sorry. Next. Sometimes death is better. Sometimes death is better. Psycho. American Psycho. Pet Cemetery. Ugh. And finally. Whatever you do, go fall asleep. Um, um, the ring. No. That's whatever you do. Don't turn on the TV. A Nightmare on Elm Street was the final one. So I believe you got one right. Congratulations and enjoy <laughs> the bathroom. That's coming up on the show. I've got so some, what, what do I have to do in I've the bathroom? I've got some things for you to say in the In mirror. the dark? Yeah. No. Miss 
Seven, it's Ryder. Thank you for checking out the show. We've sent Lisa to the bathroom. She failed the mission of naming scary movies, so now she has to say very scary things into the bathroom mirror. Uh, she doesn't know this yet, but while she's saying scary things and counting down, I'm going to run to the bathroom and scare her from the outside. So that will be Live on the radio right now. Let's connect Lisa now. Hey. Hello? Hey. Hey. Okay, so you're playing a game called Peekaboo, which is like, okay. has a long history of speaking to the demons. And apparently you are going to see something when you open your eyes. I hope you're ready for that. Okay, just give me one second. I'm just figuring out the lights because they automatically turn on in this bathroom when I walk in, but I think there's a button I can press to turn it off. Hold on. Okay. Keep us updated here. Okay, I got it. Okay, so now I'm in... Oh, okay. I'm in the dark, and I'm supposed to look at myself in the mirror? Yes, with your eyes closed as tight as they can, and then you what? count okay. down from 15 seconds... And you say, peekaboo, peekaboo, I see you. And then you oh, open God. your eyes and see, tell me and tell us what you see live on the radio, okay? So okay. you're supposed to count down like pretty loud. Okay. From 15 my and, and don't rush it. Yeah. Ready? Okay. Start yeah. counting down now. 15, 14, <laughs> 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. What was it? Oh, God, I forget. Peekaboo, peekaboo, I see you. Oh, Ryder, get back here. Oh, I'm kill him. <laughs> Woo. Oh, it's a good thing she's in the bathroom because I think she just peed. Play 107, Ryder and Lisa, welcome back. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. I'm sorry to the listeners because I wasn't expecting to shriek or scream that close to my phone speaker. Oh. I don't know what that sounded like. I wasn't in the studio. I've never so seen I didn't you see... run that fast away <laughs> from me, actually, more so than towards me. I was quite worried. <laughs> uh, all right. So being scared is something that just kind of goes with Halloween. So that's why we've been doing terror tales for most of the month. Mm -hmm. Just very scary stories that listeners submit. We got one in particular that hit us both really hard. Like, it's just such a vivid image. So we both decided we wanted to save it for Halloween, uh -huh. and we're actually going to get the guy on to tell his account. And now, here's another terrifying episode of Terror Tales! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Shane, whenever you're ready, man. I grew up in Saskatchewan. Uh, I moved away from like grade two or something like that. We used to play kind of all over the place just because it was back in the 80s. So I guess I'm dating myself a bit. There was a lady that lived in the house in the corner, like right across the alley from us. And she used to like sit at her window. And I just remembered her like waving at us every so often. And I have like vivid memories of being in her in her doorway and her giving us candy like this like red ribbon candy it wasn't until years later that we had moved away and we were having like a family dinner and just kind of talking about our childhood and, and back home and stuff and uh, I brought up the old lady that lived on the corner and my dad had no idea what I was talking about I explained it further and he said nobody lives in that house oh. it actually was boarded up and it had been boarded up 
for years, even before I was in kindergarten or grade one. What? Dude. Yeah. I still, to this day, I still can, like, picture her face. Like, I can picture her living room. I can picture her, like, bronze trinkets and baubles everywhere. I can picture exactly what she was wearing. Um, every time I can picture her, though, she's wearing the same thing. And every time I picture her giving me a candy, the candy is the same candy. It has a chunk missing out of the side, but this is like several times. I actually went there with a friend once, and I reached out to him. This was years ago, because I was like 20 when we had this conversation. So this was like 10, 20 years ago almost. And uh, I reached out to him, and he remembered the same exact thing. No way. And you remember going to the house by yourself sometimes too, and same outfit, same chipped candy. Same chip candy. This was almost 30 years ago, so you know how the memory gets kind of fuzzy. Yeah. And, yeah, but like, still. I don't, I don't, it doesn't really even seem like a terror tale because it's nothing malicious about it. But like I said, to this day, I'll be I'll be working or whatever, and like her face will pop into my head. No way. Dude, this is why I, I actually, really don't want to die naked. Because <laughs> then if you're a ghost and you haunt someone, every time you're the creepy naked ghost. Yeah, at least she was wearing her moomoo. So yeah, exactly. Thankful. What I find fascinating about this is that you remember the inside of her house, but if it was boarded up, like, where were you? Were you in a different dimension in those moments? Like, I find this to be so cool and fascinating. It is bizarre because I actually looked into it years later and I, like, tracked down who lived there because it's a small town. Everyone knows who lived there and what happened. And I guess this woman's husband actually left in the early 80s. He just, like, left town with his, like, mistress or whatever. And she actually had passed away and she was found, like, weeks later on her couch, which is in front of her, the front window that I remember her standing in front of. Um, Shame. And this, this actually happened in about the same month I was born. So, like, there's eight, just no way before that. Yeah. Bizarre, man. <laughs> oh, it's been a minute since we've uh, tackled this little segment. Flower shop, flower shop, flower shop Friday. So, this is where we prank phone call a florist and see what dumb things we can get them to write on a card. We speak for yourself. Sorry, yeah. Lisa doesn't really like this segment. Makes <laughs> her like anxious. It. Yes, but usually the whole goal is to get a reaction out of the florist, and they're usually hilarious, wholesome mm. humans. What we've learned over the years is they will write anything on a card. Alpine Florist can help you. Oh, pretty good. Thanks. How are you? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Thanks. You? Good. Good. Hey, can you fill out a card for me quick? I'm going to pop in a little later and pick out some flowers. Okay, just a second. Hey, can I give you the message? Hi there, how are you? Oh, pretty good, thanks. You? Good, so you want to give me a message? Mike. Yeah? Thanks for the invite to your Halloween party. To your Halloween party, okay. I'm going to dress up as the guy who's not going because your parties suck. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm going to go. Your parties suck. Okay. Yeah, it's not because of COVID or anything, mainly just because his parties suck. Can you read that back to me? Just make sure we got it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mike, thanks for the invite to your Halloween party. I'm going to dress up as a guy that's not going because your parties suck. Thank you. No problem. We'll have that ready for you. Flower shop, flower shop, flower shop Friday. What a sweetheart. Yeah. I'm definitely going to keep uh, this little piece of audio for any time I tell you a joke and you don't laugh. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to play this instead. <laughs> that's awesome. We're done with Terror Tales after this one for 2020. I know, it sucks. Halloween is just the best. We do this like all month leading up to Halloween. Yeah, it'll return next year, yep. 2021, if we are all still alive. Hey. And now, okay. here's another terrifying episode of Terror Tales. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Man, this one came in from Heather, and it is very scary. Yep. Let's roll. No, not that one. Play the other song. There we go. It's better. <laughs> Heather said, this happened to me. Okay. I had my daughter on February 11th. Her due date was February 13th. On the 13th, my grandma sadly passed away. 
She lived in Black Diamond just outside of Calgary. Because I had my daughter, I didn't travel to go to the funeral. That night, I had a dream and my grandma was in it. We were in a mall bathroom. I had just come out of the stall and she was wearing a rose-colored two-piece blazer suit. She told me that she was okay and things would be fine and then turned and walked away. I ran out of the washroom to find my dad to tell him and then I woke up. Okay. That afternoon, I called my dad to tell him about my dream. And as soon as I told him what she was wearing, he started to cry. Was she wearing it at the funeral that she didn't go to? And I asked what was wrong, and he told me my grandma was buried in exactly what he described. Sorry, what I described to him. No. Instant goosebumps. Get these stories in. We'll do it again next year. Heather. (laughs) I'm always a little bit skeptical because it's so amazing. Yeah. Yeah, pretty wild story. Thank you for all the submissions here on Terror Tales this year. Appreciate it. Play 107, it's Ryder and Lisa. Thank you for checking out the show. The 90s and 9 gets fired up here in about five minutes. Uh, We just got a text about scary movies. Uh, Big fan of the show. Hardeep uh, asked if we had any suggestions for our Netflix of movies that are going to scare his kids because they were really interested. Okay, if you're listening right now and you have a suggestion, please hit us up because I personally haven't been watching any scary movies on Netflix mm-hmm. yet. I want to also know what's good. All right, so scary on, like, let's go any streaming service. What movie would you recommend? I think every kid needs to, first of all, read the book, The Witches by Roald Dahl. Okay. He also wrote Matilda and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and the BFG, but the movie The Witches is very well done. Angelica Houston portrays the main Mm. witch. It was made in 1990 and Anne Hathaway is portraying the witch in a new reboot of the movie coming out soon. So go watch that. I would say like one of my favorite horror movies over the last year or two is definitely Us. Oh yeah. I don't know if it's good for kids. It depends like, how old, how the kids old are, are Hardeep's children. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so we have to give you an update on our Halloween. We're uh, dressed up. Lisa lost a bet, mm-hmm. so I got to pick her costume. I'm the A&W guy, Alan, from the commercials. And it's so well done that we posted this on all of Play 107's social media. Go check it out. A listener thought that Alan was promoting a new burger on our social media. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the comments. That's how much Ryder looks like <laughs> Alan from a and I think bald men have the best Halloween costumes. So, Lisa, if you'd like to see what I made her dress up as part of my team costume. Which was $50, by the way. <laughs> I'm a burger, and it was a 50 50- 50 bucks? That's a crime. Yeah. But luckily, a dropped off seven burgers for us, so like that's pretty much making up for it. <laughs> Big shout out to them <laughs> for seeing the costumes and dropping off some breakfast slash lunch brunch. Uh, but yes, if you'd like to see our costumes, play 107YEG on any social. The 90s at 9 on Play 107. Quite the mix today. Make sure you're getting your requests in <laughs> by texting 780-784-7107. Just want to take a minute and send my thoughts and prayers to parents and caregivers of kids that are going to be jacked up on sugar this weekend. And to anyone that works in emergency services, like Sarah wrote in this morning saying she's doing night shift. And not only is it Halloween and people are going to be jacked up on sugar, but also there is a full moon. Yeah. And the time change over the weekend. There's a lot going on. It's going to be a real mess on personalities. <laughs> you're going to see the worst of people. If you're feeling a bit off. It's not your fault. Just go lay in your bed, lock your <laughs> go, door. Yeah, go avoid. Please avoid people. I used to take my daughter the day after Halloween when I'd let her like really hammer down. Because by the time you get home from trick or treating, it's usually like too late. She can have like one or two. Okay. But then the next day is like, let's go at this candy. And there's just wrappers everywhere. Yeah. But then I would immediately take her swimming or to the trampoline park or rock climbing and burn that energy off. I don't know what you do this year. You let them just bounce off their bedroom walls. You do what our parents did when we were kids. Send them outside? They send you outside and they say, don't come home until the streetlights are on. I'm serious. That was just your parents. Oh, was it? (laughs) No. (laughs) Was it just me? Oh, no. (laughs) There is something shaking down tomorrow that is going to be a very powerful moment. 
uh, really thoughtful gesture. It's happening in Mournville. Yeah, uh, so if you're... Sorry. Go ahead. If you have friends or family that live there, or maybe you reside in St. Albert, um, be aware of this, because it could be a very beautiful and thoughtful thing for you to do. Uh, we'll start with Arizona's backstory, as she's gotten some very tough news over the last little while, at the end of September specifically, uh, that her brain tumor... Um, had, I mean, taken a hold, really, and the doctors, sadly, have given her six months. Yes, so Arizona is a nine-year-old girl that lives with her family in Mournville. So for Halloween tomorrow, what they're asking is to surprise her with a Halloween parade Mm drive-by of her home at noon. And they're even going to have a drop-off spot for candy if you'd like to bring candy with you and drop it off, then they'll sanitize it or whatever needs to happen. But. Um, yeah, it just sounds like it's going to be uh, a pretty big parade uh, of cars driving by, mm-hmm. showing support, people dressed up in the vehicles. Maybe you want to get the kids dressed up, and that can be what you go to do. Yeah, get your dog, go awesome. for a walk by. Indeed. Yeah, uh, so we have the details if you want, if you're interested or know someone that would be, please hit us up on the text line right now, and we will send the info your way. Including the address, yep. and it is at noon tomorrow. <laughs> Lighter and Lisa. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Play 107.